Hi guys, very casual video today. I'm just gonna walk you through what's on my iPad. Using a new mic today, let me know if you, know, ooh, let me know if you notice a difference. Let's get into it. Starting off with my iPad model in this video, it's the iPad Pro 12.9 inch. I have a few different iPads because I create iPad content constantly, but my iPad Pro 12.9 inch is definitely my favorite one as far as creativity and creation goes. Also, all my iPad accessories will be linked below. I have a new link in bio link that has all of the links you will need. It has all my Apple Pencil cases, my iPad cases, my iPad keyboard, everything you need is in that link. So let's just get into what's on my iPad. So starting off with my wallpaper. I found this specific wallpaper on Pinterest. I just search gradient wallpaper and a bunch of different options will come up. I do offer free wallpapers every single month as well as I also have free gradient wallpapers in that same link. And all of the widgets you see on the screen are just photo widgets using the Widgetsmith app and then I just upload a Pinterest photo to them. And I have videos on how I do that on my YouTube channel and TikTok as well. Moving into what's on my home screen, I have three shortcuts for the planners I use most. I use digital planners using the GoodNotes app. So this first one is my 2022 planner, just one of my favorite planners to use. Obviously, it's just your typical yearly planner. The next link is to my weekly dashboard, which is how I like to plan my week. I showed you guys in my last video, my Sunday reset vlog, how I planned my week and used that. I also have another video on here showing how I plan my week. My whole channel is just all about planning. And the third shortcut I have is for my vision boards, just so I have easy access to look at them and get inspired whenever I need a little bit of motivation. I love using good notes. It's my favorite note-taking app. Then next we have Spotify, of course. This is what I use to listen to all of my music. I have tried Apple Music in the past, but I just like Spotify more. Next is Canva, and this is a design app that I use to schedule my Instagram, or not schedule my Instagram. I use to lay out my Instagram feed and kind of brainstorm that. I also use it to make different graphics for thumbnails. I use it to make vision boards. Um, I show you guys how to use this in all my monthly planning videos because we make vision boards in every single one of those videos. The next one is Pinterest. Obviously, I feel like most of you guys probably know what Pinterest is. It's just a great place to find inspiration. I'm always making boards for different products that I'm designing or just different ideas that I have. Next is Procreate. This is a drawing app for the iPad. It is my personal favorite drawing app I've ever tried. It's $10 and I absolutely love it. And I have a beginner's guide to Procreate tutorial on this channel. The next app is the Flip Clock app and this is how I get the aesthetic kind of flip clock that you see in a lot of my different TikToks and Instagram pictures. It's more of just an aesthetic thing, I feel like. All right, this next app is Behance. This is like the Pinterest, but for graphic design. You can find all types of graphic design inspiration here. Just beautiful graphics, fonts, gradients, just so many ideas. Next app is Notion, and I don't even know how to really describe this. It's kind of just an all-in-one note-taking, planning, list-making app. The amount of things you can do with Notion are just incredible. Again, I do have a Notion video on this YouTube channel. And the last app on my home screen is Spark, and this is an email app that I use. The Spark app is great because it organizes your emails, so I love that it puts all of the newsletters in one so I can bulk delete them. So on the next page, I have a bunch of different folders. This one is just the utilities folder. I'm not really gonna go through this because it's all of the you know basic apps that we know that come on iPad and iPhone, aside from this MD Clock app that I have downloaded, which is just another one of those clock apps. And this one has really great widgets for your home screen if you're looking for some cute widgets. The next folder I have is games. I don't play a ton of games on my iPad, but I do have a few downloaded that are my favorite. I absolutely love Plants vs. Zombies. I've played this since I was a kid. It's a really fun game. I definitely recommend getting it if you have an iPad. I just have both of them. I have Plants vs. Zombies 1 and Plants vs. Zombies 2. I also have Angry Birds. This is a classic game. I feel like 
everybody knows Angry Birds. I don't even need to explain Angry Birds, okay? This game called Peggle, I used to play all the time on my computer when I was a kid, and then I found out that they have an iPad app, so I've been playing it. Fun game, really easy to learn low skill. <laughs> the next game is Wordscapes. It's just a game where you make words out of the letters. Very fun and just kind of a good brain game. Again, kind of mindless, but still using your brain. And last one is Scrabble. Scrabble is such a great game and you can play it with friends. You can play it as a guest. And yeah, we all know and love Scrabble. The next folder is my food folder. Love food, love cooking. And the first app is Paprika. This is a way to import in different recipes. The next app is the Food Network app. Again, this you can just look up different recipes from different Food Network shows. The next app is the Epicurious app. And this is more of a bougie type of food app. The recipes are a little bit more elevated. They are a little bit more adventurous than I usually try to do, but as you can see in this clip, the app wasn't actually responding, so um, that's unfortunate. But they do have a lot of great recipes when the app does work. And then here you can see me deleting the New York Times food app because they, I don't know if they changed it, but you need to have a membership. So I wasn't trying to pay for another monthly subscription, so I just deleted it off my iPad. The last app is called Mixel. This is a cocktail recipe app and you can enter in different cocktails. They have all of the basic traditional cocktail recipes on here, which I think is great for just easy reference. Then we have the entertainment section. I'm not gonna go through all of these because they're pretty self-explanatory, you know, Netflix, Hulu. I did wanna show you guys the Masterclass app. I had Masterclass for a short period of time. I paid for it for one month, but it is kind of expensive. So I recommend paying your one month and getting in as many classes as you can, but I did really enjoy the classes that I took. I was also going to show you the Night Sky app, which was a really cool app where you could see where the constellations are, but they made it a paid for app, which again, I did not want to pay for, so I deleted it off my iPad. Next we have the create section, and the, these are all of my different fun creative apps that I have. The first one is Photoshop Express. This is like a faster version of Photoshop, as you can imagine. It comes with different templates and photos, very easy to use, and I feel like it has less of a learning curve than full-on Photoshop. Next is the regular Photoshop app. This is just your traditional Photoshop layout. Really handy to have this on the iPad for when I am on the go, but like I said, I usually use this on my MacBook Pro. Then we have the Adobe Fresco app. This is a digital drawing and painting app, kind of similar to Procreate, but a lot more robust. Next app is Skillshare. I absolutely love Skillshare. I have used them for so many years. I actually use them when I first got an iPad to learn Procreate and learn how to hand letter and draw. We have Adobe Lightroom. This you can. This is a photo editing app, so you can adjust all of your photos, create your own presets and filters for your Instagram or just your own personal photos. The next section is business. So first I have Trello. This is a really great app for creating tons of different lists or different project workflows. Next is the Etsy app. So of course I sell my own products on Etsy, but I also love supporting other small business owners. So I do love having Etsy on my iPad. The next app is Pexels. This is a copyright royalty-free photos app. This is how I find all of the images I use for my monthly wallpapers. Next is Zoom. We all know Zoom. That's just a video conferencing app. Then we have Keynote. This is a presentation app, kind of like PowerPoint, but just Apple's version of that. And you can create different presentations. You can even create your own digital planner using this software. Then I have the Google Sheets and Google Docs app. I use both of these for my business, just tracking different things, writing different scripts for videos, and just all different ideas. I use these all the time. I have the Notability app, just another digital note-taking app that you can use to take notes, digitally plan, basically all of the things I talk about 
in all of my good notes videos you can do them on notability and the last app i have in here is unsplash which is just another stock photo app the next folder is my books folder so the first one is libby and this is a way to connect digitally to your local library with your library card i have a library card so always looking for ways to get access to more books then i have the books app i don't really use this because i don't read on my ipad very often i have a kindle and i also like physical books but that's a great way to read more. And then Goodreads, of course. This is where I track the books I'm reading. Next folder is the shopping folder, which is the dangerous folder. I have Best Buy, which is great. It's where I buy all my tech purchases, most of them. Then I have the Wayfair app, Urban Outfitters. They do have some really cute finds. I love their graphic t-shirts. Then we have the Target app. I love ordering certain things on Target ahead of time and then you can just go pick it up at the store. And the last app I have is the H&M app. Again, it is more fast fashion-y, but it's a great price point and I do really like a lot of the clothes I get from there. And the last bin I have is my to try bin. And this is all of the different apps that I wanna to try to review for you guys or make a TikTok about. So the first one is called Color Hex or Hex Color. It's a color game, kind of like a puzzle. And just seems like a nice mindless game to play when you're trying to, you know, calm your anxiety from the day and just chill on the couch. Next app is the Daily Stoic app, or it's the Stoic app, sorry. And this is by Ryan Holiday, who wrote the Daily Stoic, one of my favorite daily books, just like a daily passage. I wanna try his app. It does have an in-app purchase. I think you have to have a membership, but I will pay it just for, you know, to review it for you guys, of course. I feel like it's something that is totally up our alley, as in you and me, the audience. The next app is interesting. It's called the Blinkist app, and it basically gives you short summaries of all different books. So you can kind of just get the gist, the main highlights, the main summary of the book. It could be bad in the way that you're not getting the full spectrum of the book, but also it could just be an, a good way to decipher if you wanna read the full book or not by just kind of getting a quick glimpse at what it's about. The next app is the Post-it app, and this is just an interesting way to brainstorm and you can create different groups of different post-its. I could see this being cool for students and even people in like the corporate world with brainstorming different projects that are upcoming. Then we have the CoStar app, which is an astrology app. They don't have an iPad app, so it's like the iPhone in the blank screen. And the last app is the Intelligent Change app. These, This is the company that made the five minute journal. There's an in-app purchase and you have to pay monthly I believe. Again, I feel like this is something that is totally up my audience's alley. So this is something I would pay for and try out and review for you guys. So those are all the different apps. And I just wanted to quickly show you the Apple Fitness app as well, which I realized wasn't in any of my folders. So I'm going to have to move that. But I really love the Apple Fitness platform. They have tons of different types of workouts, meditations, and I highly recommend the Apple Fitness app. Oh, and I just wanted to quickly show you here, the Instagram app is good for one thing and one thing only on the iPad, and that is drawing on your Instagram story. I don't do this all the time because it's just like an extra added step, and usually I'm just like trying to like get in and get out for social media, but this is a fun way to add a cute little flair to your Instagram stories if you're a creator or not. But that's about it, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got some insight onto some good iPad apps to try out if you have an iPad and are looking for something. But all right, hope you guys love this video and I will see you next time. Bye.